Anuja. Okay, and Rahul was there. Okay, not anything. He'll join. But let's share my screen first. My screen is visible, right? Can I please confirm? My screen is visible. Yes. yes okay. So uh, yesterday we have just left these two parts, like uh, form validation. So name and email. So here everything means I have completed the code. So this kind of things are coming. So uh, this is I'm just explaining what I did. Okay. So you can see that these are blocks, all blocks of input box, right? Name, email, mobile number, password. All blocks are there. And this is the submit button, input type submit button there that you can click. So this is the submit and the execution is fire on that uh, your on submit. So the form, right? Whatever I added earlier. So this is the button where you have to add this dot bind this. Otherwise the event attached event listener will not work, right? And then state, all the state fields and error. And this method, submit registration form. This is the method where you can see actually, I just make the debugger, okay. One minute just. Yes, so you see that this form, right? So e dot prevent default. This method is uh, stop the execution to the server side, and then our all the validation form. What is the method? This dot validate form. So this dot validate form. This is one method where I have added the validation bar, like username. Okay. So username form dot valid false and I have encountered this thing that added that please enter your username. So when any username, I have not put any username. First thing, enter your username, right? This is coming. Same way uh, that get the type of username, the field. And if it's coming undefined, not equal to undefined, then I'll again calculate one thing that alphabets, characters. Only alphabets and characters will be uh, applicable and it also uh, already entered over there. So regex operation I'll add, the match. To match only string I've added, okay. Same thing in the email. First check the null, is, uh, null value is it there or not. Means if anybody not entering any value, that time this condition will work. Uh, after that, he enters wrong value, that time this condition will work with the appropriate regex expression of your uh, email validation. Okay, let's see. Like name, I have had two. Okay. You can see the message is all, already changed. They enter alphabets character only, right? Then the message is gone, so alphabets are coming. Now email ID, okay. I have not put any email ID still now. Now I am giving one one. That is not the pattern of emails, right? So they are seeing that please enter the valid email ID. The email ID I have added the learningmate.com. So it checks that at the rate of and then .com or .viz, anything in the domain organization name domain is added or not. It will check this part. Okay. Same thing is mobile number. You can see the mobile number also validated, right? So I have added, I have used some patterns over there like email ID. So pattern not match. Pattern I have created. This is the new regex expression pattern. We have created uh, this way. Uh, 
physics part so if pattern false here i have added that pattern dot test email id other it's not coming it's not equal then the error message will be thrown okay same way i have added that your uh, mobile number the values are coming appropriately like the mobile numbers so fields and that mobile number also have added some expression attached the match the app the exact mobile number how it looks this expression i have added over there okay so this value are coming and the password also check two password means you have to enter your strong password enter your re re-enter your password secure and strong password is anybody two what happened please enter your strong and uh, strong password so i have had some at the rate of underscore nine zero zero so it not matched and i So this is the value. What is expect that at the rate of and this should be there. One minute. I'll see. It's still strong password is effective. Let's see demo what the password is coming. One minute. So you also know that how I'm debugging the code, right? So here you can add debugger or you can add this pointer over there. This breakpoint is coming. Now you can see what I added. Password is coming Q Q Q. This value, right? Dot match. Mm 
only it does not accept. Yes. So now it's coming. And I've added the errors over there. So errors dot any any value of this. So this value like password, mobile number, this is coming for this uh, your name. Okay. This name I have added. Email ID. Na? Enter email ID. You can see. The email is the fields name. This is the actually name value. Fields name value, and I have checked all the parameters and all the necessary things. And that error message, the mobile number, the email ID, that username, and all the things are showing over there. And this is the actual validation from calculation part. This function. I have uh, called this function inside this on submit button. This is my on submit, and inside the on submit, I have conditionally add this pin if username fields is not empty, is not there, so validate from will be trigger and set the necessary fields. This this function is it clear to you, all of you? Hello, uh, can you please call on one from? Hello, just uh, question. You are, I mean, you are understood, right? How it's uh, I think. Uh, yes, but uh, yes, uh, any questions? Anything uh, understood? No question. Handle, no question. Handle changes. Handle changes, this one uh, yes. on change. Okay. Means in the input type text, this is the username, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And whatever I have added over there, now this value. Okay. This is coming. This uh, function will be triggered on this the handle change. You see, one minute. Hello. Ah yes. Some e dot target dot value. Target dot value. So, you see, I add this thing W all time. This the value is uh, it taking with this function. So, in the handle change, you get the current value of the input type X box. Okay. Okay. So, same thing I have added. Same places, right? Mm -hmm. Only the taking the current value, that's why on change handle change this value is coming. Okay. I, I I request all of you please uh, add some uh, bootstrap CSS part over there. Okay. This uh, code I will share. Okay. And at, uh, this is normal CSS and the CSS part I have added in the form validation the CSS part. This is normal uh, CSS I have added over there. This nothing was fan, uh, any just normal error message success message. But that only valid so you cannot be uh, any of the boost okay you can also use you can take the extra framework and then some 
classes there so it looks so nice after that so look for look and feel you can use the booster part okay hello hi yes yeah okay hello koshik yes yes do you have any question please answer yeah yes uh html part where to put uh, html, HTML part? part is there inside the render in the return this is my html okay okay this is the html and inside that you you first uh, whenever you create the form na, so split your thinking means first you have to create the normal html okay no need to create the dynamic part first first create your html view after that added the react necessary uh, functionalities over there right i have added the submit button huh? so submit always uh, don't no need to add on click on change over there your input side su submit itself call through the form method post you will you, you will be adding the on submit trigger over there so on submit trigger we have created one function okay the submit user registration form inside that function i have created the validation form this is the main validation form logic is written over here in this function okay, okay. so Yes, and this is the HTML dot uh, index dot HTML file. Index dot HTML means there in the app you can see index dot HTML only serve the D by D, nothing a D by D root. Okay, if you change the D by D, it will not work. Uh, now, okay. root one, I have add root one. So the total object, na, whatever you created, this object is coming with this d by d so here everything is written means i have add something some text okay you can see only the static value was coming right yes now you have changed the d by d so it's customizable right mm -hmm. this is my id okay so this id you have to add one minute index dot this is the root okay okay mm -hmm. this is your root element na? create mm -hmm. your root now you see coming okay understood yes how it's working first entry point js is index dot js okay here mm -hmm. i have added your id D by D, anything ID you can take, okay? And the app I have rendered, root dot render. Root means you have to create some elements, dynamic element, na? So you, if you debug this thing, this one div. Inside the div, every dynamic HTML, whatever I've created, where I've written this thing, form validation example, I have written inside the app.js instead of form validation.js na mm. form validation.js and form validation.js I have import in the app right the form validation.js right mm. and then form validation.js is rendering inside this onuja div that d by d whatever I have added okay so d by d you, have, you can you can change you have to change two places one is html another is your index.js wherever you have added your ids okay and html part i have added over there and the logic of the validation i have added inside this validated form and, uh, this is the main building block of that validation part Okay, any more questions? Uh, Kaushik, uh, yes, okay. Uh, I have doubt regarding this uh, regular expression because uh, till now I didn't understand regular expression. Do you have any good documentation 
Uh, regular expression, I uh, I can give you some basic understanding right now. Okay, I have some documents so I can upload over there. Okay, the regex expression means this is your uh, like your pattern. You can tell this is a pattern. Okay, pattern recognition. So this if you this piece of code I can change. I can write through the JavaScript or any react js coding libraries okay but it takes so many lines okay but same thing i can use the regex expression it's a pattern pattern of validation okay so in the regex expression if you add this pattern so only this pattern of text will work you can see This is the uh, regex expression object I have created, and inside the object I have added this pattern. Hi, actually I don't know exactly till now how this means the meaning of that first backslash after that tag uh, symbol. Uh, so uh, I don't is, understand. So expression uh, regex expression is another site is there. Okay, you can uh, go and check the regex expression how it is work. So it's similar kind of pattern recognition part inside the React. So here you we can uh, I have added the pattern for email ID. Okay, so here you can see A to Z. Okay, A to Z A zero nine dot. So this is one array of array of syntax, and then concatenate with the add the rate, this side, and then dot this this value. Okay, dot com dot this thing. Now see dot this value. Okay, so this is one email ID. Regex expression. Same thing. You, if you want to change, you can change with JavaScript code. Not an issue. It will work. But it takes so many lines of code. So instead that we can, I am taking some regex expression code. Regex expression side you can check here. Regular expression. W3 school you can check. What I, what I have told the find any character between the brackets, right? Inside the bracket, you have to add some characters. And this is the not. Not between the brackets. 0 to 9 means number. Any character between the bracket, any digit. 0 to 9. And this is not. And you can check this thing link. Regular expression side. So many pattern recognition are showing over there. I have added this link. In the chat box, you can check. Or any doubts? Anything? Okay. Now next thing, whatever I thought, uh, one more uh, thing regarding style, okay, that I want to discuss, that is your radium. Radium on third party, uh, you can say plugins or CSS building block, you can create through the radium, yes. Radium, okay. So in the radium, same thing, the styles, okay. The styles, the object we can create and inject inside the radium, uh, inside the code. So this is another syntax in other package in the package the JSON you have to take the radium. So first see how radium style. Yeah. So many documentation you can get. Same thing, the building blocks of style, whatever I've created, 
this style like style and hoverman it looks like some sas type of scripting ss uh, the css style renderer so this thing we can use through the radium this radium we have to install over there one minute npm i in radium this version we can add and then i have created one document of the radium style so if i want to run this one minute Angel.js, app.js, radium, radium. You see that one syntax created in the radium. There's a button, button, and I've added the style style.base. So you can create small small object over there and then you can add through the style like color and the hover two things can use the color so normally you cannot do this thing without normal G, uh, css building block the inline css you cannot do these things so you have to add these things and the hover and then also i have added some media queries like if i change the width see it takes the resolution wise css media queries it will add and in the style root section this is you have to import on the from the radium and then uh, wrap your class through the radium this is called higher order component that i will discuss when i uh, when hoc will discuss that time i'll go through that but radium you can take the higher order component and inside that you have to wrap your component otherwise it will not work if you will if i will add this thing I hope she found the right. I think it's optional. You can add 
or not uh, you have to import the radium and then you have to inject this value so radium you can use for the styling part okay any question hello hello no question so uh, you can use that this thing radium uh, uh, radium, yes. radium yes. Style, uh, actually uh, external uh, library or external uh, dependent hmm? external, external this is a class this okay. this class i have created okay you can take anything no uh -huh. need to write a radium style okay you can but uh, this is the structure of code Okay. Yes, yes. Yes, you can do any kind of thing, not an issue. I have add this class, I have created this class. Yes. No need to create this type. Anything, any name you can, okay, we can use on uh, in in class uh JS. Huh, in class dot JS, but you have to import the radium. Okay, first okay, you, have import the install. Radium you have to install the radium. Mm -hmm. This is the dependencies. Okay. Yes, yes. you have to install. So it is. It will help to uh, do means is uh, make your work so easy. Okay, like yeah. hover, like your media queries you have added. Okay. Yes. So that time, we in, in inside this building block we can create this thing. This object will create. So it will work, and then since the styles. Okay. Yeah. Media queries I have added. My media screen mean width 500 and max width 6 pixel that means if your screen size is minimum 500 minimum okay mm -hmm. and maximum 600 means screen resolution minimum 500 and max 600 then this piece of code will run yes coach The screen side is beyond the max size 600. So normal CSS is coming, right? Background are not working. You can see. Okay. And then style root, I have created. This is a wrapper. Means you can call it a uh, fragment type. Okay. Style root. So inside the style root, I have added all classes. You can see radium one, this class margin zero pixel means it will center line okay yes. and then you have added your width text align so you can notice one thing this piece of code if you do in normal css what what you will write text hyphen align center right like text align you have added the camel case part na? Yeah? yes so in normal CSS, text align, you can add this way, text align, hmm. center. Okay, but when you use radium or module CSS, okay, inside the JS part, that time your syntax, the key, that will be changed to camel casing. All the part okay yes so you can also use this thing in your project in radium you can use so this site i have uh, link i'm given you can check Okay, the more insight you can get over there. Same thing I have added radium, react, these kind of things. Same thing you can see background color. Okay, it coming like a ML casing, the code will be changed. Like style dot background hover. You can write with this uh, this this way. You can also write. 
and style root inside the style root to add the D classes. And one thing that is apart from the DDM, the material UI. Okay. This is also used for your styling more interactive. Okay. Like material UI is dedicated on website. Material UI. Let's see first in my code, then I will go over there. Same way you can install this thing, meter ELY core, core part, icons, if any, I, these icons are uh, basically SVG component. So you have to install this part component icon, material UI core and material icon. Two things you have to add it in your de dependencies. Okay. And then same way you can check. I have created one material UI. Uh, you can use tabs, typography, button, menu, menu item. Everything is ready made. All things are ready made. Button. You have to input the button and use it. You have to input the menu item and use it. In input box, use it. Same thing. So, One minute. I'll open it. In the material app dot chase. A tab I have added the vertical tab. Let's see. Look and feel is very good in the normal CSS. You cannot achieve in in very short shorter way. You can take lots of time for the normal CSS and JS. You cannot do this kind of thing. You can see the flash. The flash part is coming. Right. Same thing I have added. This animation, this hover effect, we will get. So this vertical tab code, I want to see. Uh, one minute. Yes. Hmm. So tab is one already one element. Tabs means many. Inside the tabs uh, component, you can add tab one, tab two, tab three with this way. This is the tab. Okay. Item one, two, three. I have add seven tabs. Seven tabs are coming. It's very easy to implement in your code base. And you see button. Already button you can import over there. Box, button, menu. From the material UI CSS and then added in the open menu and then the, the style menu item you can add this menu. This is one list ULLI, it renders 
ul la inside i have added the style item icon na to send mail right send mail how html is working how you can see ul la automatically creates the ul la you no need to add this thing na the html when it the parts it it returns ul la part no need to add any uh, this kind of code you just only mention that list item and send icon font size small okay so automatically it will add the email icon drops inbox so icon also be there so this is the tab panel and button when you click the click handle click even this function you can get pop up google the value the box is coming and when you click the uh, click the icon um, box is coming and then it will hide so and hide only creating this function in question from the military way hello is there in out way no coach no my no and this is the site more thing you can get over there Okay. Reach UI. This is called the reach UI. In this type of UI, we can achieve to the React widgets, calendar. The accordion. All the things are ready made. You can just put in your code accordion. The code base is also be there. You just click, and code is coming. Simple piece of code you can add, and your accordion will be ready. Okay, like pagination. You can see. image list very useful image list please share this link in the chat yes yes i'll i'll give i'll, I'll provide the link okay not an issue all the links i'll provide all the parts are ready made you can just copy and paste in your code and then dynamically you have to change the image name so this is the link i have added over here got it na link yes sir now one thing i want to discuss apart from the material ui that is called your react life cycle okay this things i will start today so these things uh, is there you can know that how the class based component okay how the life cycle method will work so this is the component life cycle this basic method is basically the life cycle will work with this high level component high level structure so initializing mounting updating and unmounting okay so this is your life cycle inside the life cycle the 
this kind of thing means this is the this life cycle name this method initializing mounting updating armor it's common to every languages every framework okay angular react view this thing but inside but this uh, the constructor render component did mount these things will placed in is the framework and we have to add the uh, place we have to set these kind of things to this framework okay like constructor first you know the constructor is trigger first na so any setup any methods any click bind event you have to add over there and render you can see and inside the render the view part actually is visible part render means everything is create one object the return object that will you can see in the render element it's a view component did see that good place to do data loading means if any api comes there api you will create that time you have to add in the and when the props is using that time we are at component did update and lastly we can add that component will unmount so component will unmount basically used for destroy the element when if you are using set timeout subscription subscribe in your component did mount and until and unless you go to the next component the class based component before that you have to release from the memory so it is used for the whatever stack you are using inside your memory in the class this stack will be free of use otherwise what happens the performance might, might be offered means might be slower okay so anything you can add like set timeout set uh, year intervals subscription subscribe try to remove or release in in the component will unmount and i think in the angular uh, this was ng destroy right this uh, ng destroy one life cycle method was there right ng destroy is uh, using oh, for the destroying the component ah, so same thing in the component will unmount in the react okay yes so ng destroy whatever means you have added some subscription you have added some listener then you have to release destroy the this events right inside that ng destroy so this place is basically used for clean up your codes okay any subscription you have added yes sorry yes. Hello. Hello, Lisa. Can you mute? Hello. Am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. Great. So, uh, any doubts on this part? Constructor component did mount, did update. So basically, the component life cycle in the class based component it will it goes under this uh, method. Okay, initializing your mounting, then update and unmounting. These are four methods. And then framework to framework, the methods will change. Okay, like ng on in it, it will come in the mounting part. Constructor, it will come in the initializing part. Unmount, component will unmount, or component uh, your ng destroy. That will come in the unmounting part. So, this is for the React, and this is the high level structure. And framework to framework, library, it can be changed. Okay, I have one exercise also. For this part, like I'm sharing this thing. See, 
all the methods I have created over there. First constructor. This one method I have added the gate data. And component did mount I have added. So you can see. One minute. Now when we, I run the command, so we can see which console log print first. Okay, then we can understand that which block is rendering first and which last. Okay, so component did mount, update, will unmount, and these four parts are created. Let's see. from this part then component did update it's coming from here console.log component did update and and when the gate data inside the gate data the text is changed you can see the text is changed component did mount. When the component did mount triggered, that time the value, the hello text will be changed. Initially is so hello, right? In the data set state. Inside the state, the value was hello inside the data. And then I will change in the component did mount. Okay. So these all life cycles you can use inside your class-based component. And this life cycle is replaced in the functional component through hooks. Okay. Hooks is one part that we'll discuss next day. That this kind, this everything you can achieve through the function component. Whatever we can do in the class-based component. Same thing you can do in the functional component. Any questions? No, you all are understood, right? Yes. Uh, uh, yes. And, uh, if you want to do any API related work, we can we will do that thing in component in mount. Yes. Is any state, state or prop get change that will go inside component, component DW. DW. Yes. If suppose will uh, uh, and in component will unmount uh, actually exactly. You have to release. You have to. You have to release. You have to release your uh, means. It, it means subscription, set timeout, clear interval. This this kind of stuff. If you add, then you have to release from there. Okay. okay. So next time, whenever me because uh, just a minute. Mm, I want to see something. Any, this is your Java uh, uh, DOM, okay? Means has has hello DOM. The React component is there. So whatever methods you have added, set timeout the function. So it creates one call stack. This is this stack means it will subscribe this way this one stack set timeout one minute second stack will create half stack will create so it will add it it will attach inside your component na? Mando, if you have 200 components and 200 set timeout you have created so internally set timeout create these stacks inside the component okay So whatever operation you can do inside the set timeout function, but when you re, re, when you go to the next element, next component, so better 
use case is that you have to release that component. So set timeout, you have to clear. Clear interval, set timeout, not clear. So this method, this stacks will be released automatically from the component. So performance will not be slower. That's why component will mount this uh, block is there. This I say loop cycle. Okay. Yes. So component did mount. When you create the API, simple you have to do in the component did mount. Okay. Component did update. When prop some state will be updated during the API calls during the next execution, component did update. These all are abstraction layer. Okay. So you just create the component did update. Reacts will automatically handle the states when it will trigger, when it will halt, when it will return. All things will be mentioned and inside all components. Okay. You can see. So this is your project. If I've created one project, the life cycle is how it, the this is abc.com. This is an end user, right? So what HTML, what JavaScript is rendering, we can saw through the React DOM dot render. So internally it will call the virtual DOM and virtual DOM, all modules, dependencies, it will be there. So life cycle this method is restricted inside the class every class is own life cycle own state every classes every component has its own class and its own state and then it will work so virtually virtual dom dot render inside the rend inside this method every component will be rendered and every class based component, function component will be and it will work. Okay. The npm install modules, all the things are coming. React app. If you see the syntax, the index.js, you can understand. React DOM. The React will provide React DOM. Okay. I am not creating anything. And this render method, you just pass your app. Here you can add anything, your any HTML, but reuse, for the reusability purpose, we have to create one component app. And inside the app, all the application related thing, operation, and all kind of component nested module I have to add it. And finally, this object, actually this object, whatever is coming, JavaScript object. Lastly, we have add inside that React DOM dot render. And it requires one selector, right? This is the selector where I will put my HTML part. This is a view, actually view part. Okay. Any question? Anything? Hello. Uh, yes. uh, I have one query. I, I actually, uh, I was trying uh, React Stack. React mm -hmm. Stack. So after install uh, React Stack, but uh, I was showing some error. So can I show my? Screen? Yes, yes. Then for me. Yes. I was create a project mm, then, yes. then after install uh, react home npm yes, yes. But, yeah but showing this uh, error I was found this now found but not getting some solution npm install react tab okay just uh, the session will over okay and I will connect you later okay Okay. Because this is uh, the this not thing I will edit in that session. Yes. Sir. I'll connect it separately and try to okay. solve the problem. Okay. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir.
okay then i think tomorrow i will be in the office i don't know because abu sir is coming in the calcutta you all know so i have to maybe the session will be not be held or i will update in the morning time okay session will be there or not for the tomorrow only any questions correction on time or uh, no no uh, it will be held or not that i can confirm hmm. in the group okay? okay actually i have to go to office tomorrow yes okay that's why because abu sir is coming so that's why i have to go hmm. okay so wrap up the session okay i'll stop my screen recording okay